over 200 million years ago, small reptiles of the order Rhynchocephalia started appearing on planet Earth. Living alongside dinosaurs, they spread all over the world, thriving for over 50 million years. But then came a period of steep decline and ultimately extinction leaving only one species remaining, the Tuatara. Tuatara cast a lonely figure, set adrift on Gondwana land 80 million years ago, they are now only found in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Slow moving, slow maturing and long lived their average lifespan is 60 years, but in ideal conditions can live to be over 100. They can grow to be 60 centimeters long and weigh over a kilogram. Nocturnal and cold-blooded, they prefer the damp, moderate temperatures of their burrows, coming out at night to feed on beetles, worms and other creepy crawlies on the forest floor. They sometimes sun themselves during the day, not far from their burrow entrances. Tuatara are famous for their parietal or third eye on top of their heads. Only visible in young animals, it is thought to aid circadian rhythms. In Tereo, Tuatara means peaks on the back. Having a strong ancestral connection, they symbolize resilience and guardianship. Around 750 years ago, humans arrived to our fair shores, bringing predator species, most disastrously of all, the rat. The predation, competition for food, and habitat loss that humans brought caused the Tuatara to retreat to a sprinkling of offshore islands around Cook Strait and the Bay of Plenty. Efforts to eradicate the predator species from these islands in the 1980s enabled the Tuatara population to stabilize. In 2005, conservation efforts enabled a small population of Tuatara to be established in a North Island sanctuary. The birth of a hatchling three years later is thought to be the first Tuatara born on a New Zealand mainland island in over 200 years. Ever since the Brook Waimarama Sanctuary was first dreamt of in 2001, establishing a population of Tuatara was one of its founding objectives. Twenty years later, the sanctuary has a proven record of achievement, with continued development and support enabling the successful translocation of Tieke, Kakariki and Poelefanta. In 2021, the Sanctuary's board felt the time was right to add Tuatara to that list. But returning the animals to the Sanctuary would involve many parties and take a lot of organisation. Paramount was the blessing of Ngati Kuata and a permit from the Department of Conservation. Tuatara, they remain under the ownership of Ngati Kuata. But Kuata lends them out and gifts, gifts them without transferring ownership to um, institutions, sanctuaries, and so on. But in this case, of course, the, the receiving iwi was actually Ngāti Kuata themselves because they are the kaitiaki and, and the uh, uh, mana whenua of, of this land here. And um, so what needed to happen was that the sanctuary itself needed to come and meet with the Komato and present their case. And so trust is absolutely important. And, and once you have that, then can lead to the, broad, the broadening of the base of people who are involved. The discussion really gained momentum when uh, the sanctuary signed a memorandum of understanding, an MOU, with Ngāti Kuata in 2021. That helped establish two things. Firstly, a working group between the sanctuary and Ngāti Kawata and a plan to prepare the sanctuary for the reintroduction of Tuatara. Tuatara require, particularly young Tuatara, require an area that is mouse-free. We had to prove that we had a mouse-free enclosure. 
Then lies the question of putting a fence up. The eye-watering figure of $90,000 was tabled. A wee bit of a gasp around the board. And, uh, but we had to commit to that. After two years of fundraising and construction work building the 3.7 hectare mouse exclosure, it was now up to sanctuary ecologist Robert Schadewinkel to quickly source the animals themselves. Six facilities were identified that could provide Tuatara for the relocation, from Northland right down to Franz Josef. Nearly half the animals were to come from the Central Energy Wild Base Recovery Centre in Palmerston North, with other animals coming from Wellington Zoo, Waikanae and Natureland in Nelson. A list was produced of 63 or so Tuatara that were earmarked for translocation to the Brook Waimarama Sanctuary. The effort is not just to bring them to the Brook Waimarama Sanctuary, the effort uh, includes to prepare them for the translocation because the permit does not allow just to take animals from anywhere, from captive facilities, and just bring them here, release them. So they have to go through a strict and um, very detailed quarantine and disease screening process. Special transportation tubes were constructed for the busy day. There's years and years of experience of transferring Tuatara that Nati Kuata has carried out in the past. And this has been found as the best way of transporting them for the animals. It's a cardboard tube, but it's still got this kind of burrow feel to it. So once they're in there, they actually just sit there and are quiet and they don't do anything. And they, I mean, that's what Tuatara do most of the time anyways. They just don't do much, you know. And so they're basically in there. They don't need any water. They don't need any food for up to 24 hours. And we did the tour translocation in a much shorter time frame than that, like less than 12 hours. With the South Island Tuatara already housed in Natureland in Nelson, bringing together the remaining animals spread over the Lower North Island, all to be released on a single day, was going to be a logistical feat. Starting at 6 a.m. in Palmerston North, the small group of handlers then travelled to Waikanae, and finally Wellington. <laughs> During the process of that morning, it started to dawn to everyone that you know this is um, actually quite a special event, and um, yeah, it started to sink in that what's happening is actually a quite a milestone for a lot of people involved, particularly for Nati Kwata. But after literally years of planning and a frantic morning, news came through that bad weather had closed Nelson Airport, threatening the last stage of the journey. Anxieties were eased as conditions improved enough, allowing the flight to be the first to land in Nelson. A short car ride delivered the Tuatara to their new home. <laughs> For some in attendance, it was the chance for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to get a close encounter with the ancient reptiles. With all the planning, building and travel finally completed, it was time to let the Tuatara free into their new home. The animals are in the postal tubes and they get released into prepared burrows. Volunteers and staff prepared these burrows in advance and they have been also assigned to an individual. You open the postal tube and then you try to assist them to move head first into their burrow. And some of them were more complying than others. Some took two or three attempts, you know, they kind of walked past the entrance and you had to grab them and put them back in, but eventually complied. Look, we're not forcing these animals. Um, if that's what they want to do, we just let them go. Oh, 
Oh, this is an amazing day for the Brookwai Marama Sanctuary and the dividend of 20 years of really hard graft. Council's got a really big investment in the sanctuary. We think it's a really good investment in nature, uh, but we also think it's an investment in our visitor industry. This is the largest sanctuary in the South Island and the introduction of Tuatara just gives an extra reason for people to come to Nelson. We do a lot of translocations in dock and, and um a lot of birds and while that's special, yeah, Tuatara is uh, just a little bit more special than the rest, I think. Doc's been involved supporting the Trust. Trust's got a lot of capable people on the team, staff and volunteers and great support from Ngāti Kuata, so we are always ready to support them um, locally and uh, with some of our national technical advice. It was an especially poignant moment for representatives from the Central Energy Wild Base Recovery Centre who housed one Tuatara in particular, who fathered nearly half of the rehomed Tuatara. It was a love story between one very handsome boy and three lovely females. Um, our centre isn't big enough to house them and give them what they need, so we, when we were asked to be part of this programme, we thought it was a brilliant reason to get our little ones out into the wild. It was worth all the stress to finally see them out in the wild living where they should be. While the public don't have direct access to the Tuatara, tracks in the sanctuary skirt alongside the mouse exclosure, where lucky visitors may catch a glimpse of the Tuatara sunning themselves. Tours and school visits enable people to get a closer look at these fantastic animals. With the Tuatara now safely rehomed, work has started on monitoring the animal's health and behaviour. Included in the monitoring is Otago University master's student, Shiley Reed. The primary goal of my research this year is to assess the body condition, dispersal and habitat preferences of these tuatara during the first few months following the translocation. At the same time as measuring for body condition, what we're going to be doing is mapping GPS locations of where we find each of the tuatara so that we can assess their movement from their individual release sites and get a bit of an idea of how far they're dispersing and if there's any kind of clustering or areas of high density of tuatara to gain an understanding of whether they are creating territories or whether they're sort of congregating together around the release sites. It's so important that we continue to implement science research surrounding you know not only tuatara but all New Zealand fauna and flora because the more we understand about the organisms that we share our land with the better equipped we may be to protect them and to promote their longevity which is super important. We have such a beautiful country and such beautiful creatures and very unique ones just like the tuatara so I think that is a super important message to get across. While monitoring the tuatara will continue for decades, the value of the restoration of the Māori, or life force of the forest, cannot be measured. They're as much a part of this place as, as the forests are and as the land is. So to have them re re return to, to a place where they were once thriving and were common is, is, a wonderful, is a wonderful thing to see and behold. And it's all about not just restoring the ecosystem, but also being a place where the community can engage with nature. And that's a couple of things that drive us along at the pace that we work.